Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor. And this is an instruction video on how to use Excel. Excel is required in the business world. And if you don't know it, this is the place to start. This is a very basic instruction. What you learn here is everything you need to know for this class. So when you come into the Excel spreadsheet, you see this upper left section here is instruction area. This is the data that you're going to be manipulating. And then down here towards the bottom, bring this down, come on guy. This is what it should look like when you're done. Okay, so this is an example of what you're going to do with these numbers here. And you notice these are the same numbers as down here. This is what it'll look like when you're done. The commands that we're going to learn we're going to learn how to copy cells. We're going to learn how to align tabs and do, do alignment and justifying, changing column and row widths and heights, using the borders formatting tool to do grids and underscoring and thicken borders, and how to create numeric formats of, with dollar signs and without. We're going to learn math functions, how to use the auto sum tool, and how to create formulas. With all of this information, you'll be able to do financial statements, which are required in the various assignments that we have in our accounting projects. I have a demonstration video up here, which you're watching now. This is on manipulating the data and doing the Excel formatting. This one here is on how to format an Excel file for printing, okay? So I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna enlarge this a little bit. So what we have across the top, this is Excel 2010, Office 2010. I have another presentation in Office 2013 separate, but there are differences. In any case, up here at the top, this is all of our different commands that we can use, and there's far more than we'll be using here. So we'll start right off here. We want to duplicate what we see down here with these numbers here. And you can see I've got a row here that says solution, column A, B, A plus B, and A minus B. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go solution, colon, tab, 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 A, B, A plus B, and A minus B. Okay. Now, in all of this work here, one thing that we do is these, these, this grid pattern that we have here, we want to have up here. You notice that there is no grid in this solution row, but there are grids everywhere else. Okay, so one of the issues here in Excel is that the grid is will overwrite anything else. So there we go. There is my grid area. So I'm going to come up here. You notice I'm coming up here to where it says font. This is the borders. This is all of the different borders and I want to do the all border grid. Click. Okay, you do that first because any other underscoring or whatever you've done, if you put the grid on later, it'll overwrite all of that. Let's do our formulas. Okay. So we have a total here, 988, 829. Let's look at how to create that formula. I click on the box where I want the formula, and I come up here, this is, this is the auto sum tool, okay? If I just click on that, boom, you see it grabs the nearest blocks of numbers, and if I hit the enter key, boom, there it is. There's my formula, you see it says sum D14 through D21. Okay, now we called it column A, but you see the Excel references are based on here. This is column D, and this is 14, right there. So this, if I click on here, you see that is D14, okay? And this right here is D21. So I've got the formula there. Now one thing we see down here is we have a solid thickened underscore here. In accounting, an underscore means that the number below it is a summary of the numbers above it. So there's your thick bottom border. I've come down here, click on thick bottom border, and you see there's my single underscore. So there's my 
formula. Now, I want to have that same formula here and here. A couple of ways to get that. One is using the control C I mentioned here. If I do a hold on my control key and hit the C and then let go, you see it's it's highlighted that box to copy. Now I can come over and click on this box and hold down my left button on my mouse and I can drag. I let that go. I've highlighted where I want to copy. Now I hit the enter key and it's copied that formula to the next box. You notice here it's sum E14 to E21. Here it's D14 to D21. So when you copy formulas, they keep a relative positioning on their formulas, okay? Now there's nothing here yet. The formula's there, but there's no numbers there, okay? Now let's do the A plus B. This is where we use the auto sum. Oh, and one other thing on that auto sum. Let me come down here and show you here. If I click on auto sum here, you see it just it doesn't grab any numbers nearby if it did then but I can come over here and drag over that same block of numbers hit the enter key and you see I've got that same exact number so the auto sum function you can put anywhere in a spreadsheet and go grab the block of tech numbers you want to have it add up so there you go that's the auto sum now we're going to use formulas to create an equation so I'm going to click here I'm going to go equal so I, whenever you hit the equals key like that it tells Excel okay I'm expecting a formula so now I use my right arrow and I come over to A and then I hit the plus sign and then I come over to B okay so you see that there's my formula D14 plus E14 enter and there you go so there's that now I want to do a formula A minus B equals and I can just click on it a and then minus B boom and so that's a minus B now let's copy those formulas down if I highlight that I can do the control C and go control C and then drag this down here and that'll copy it but look at all those pound signs I'm going to show you how to get rid of those here in just a second I'm going to undo that and to undo anything I go alt E and then U for undo okay so now you see I've, I'm ready to copy here if I go boom boom you see there's a little black box right there if I put my cursor there and drag that black box down and let go boom it copies it again too so that's two ways to copy, one using control C and one using the little corner. Now these pound signs are there because the column is not wide enough for the numbers that are in it. So we have to know how to change the width of a column. Okay, so I come up here to G and you see how my, my cursor changes with a little double arrow. I hold on the left button on my mouse and I drag this to the right and there you see now they show up okay now by the way I've lost my underscore there I'm gonna come back click on that so now I have my thickened underscore there good now down here I have a dollar sign so if I click here and I wanna this is where you change all your different number formats up here I mean there's all kinds of number formats that you can grab but I'm just gonna go click on the dollar sign okay now it defaults to two decimal places, but you notice in our exercise here, it's only there's no decimal places. So to get rid of those decimal places, I click on it and I come here and I go right click, right click. You see, this is decreasing the number of decimal places. This is increasing. Okay. So that'll bring it to zero now. And it wants dollar sign down here too. So I click on dollar sign, right click, right click. See that dollar sign also, cause with the decimal points, boom, boom. See, it doesn't fit anymore. I get rid of those decimal points and it fits. Okay, so now we got that. All right, so let's continue with duplicating here. Now you notice these are all in bold and they're centered. Okay, so I'm going to click on the whole row. I'm going to come up here to font. I'm going to click on bold. 
and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on center. See, so now they're centered over each column. Okay. So I didn't want to see that one there, but okay, there we go. So now we're getting closer. Now I've got a thickened border around this thing here. Down here, see that thickened border all the way around that? I come up here to borders. Thick box border. Click. Boom. So now I have that. And now I have down here a thick box border around the whole thing. So I can come around this whole thing. Thick box border again. Boom. See, if I did these thick box borders before I did my grid and then entered my grid, the grid would erase all the thick box borders. So there you go. Looking good there. Now down here it says column totals. So we go, oops, I got my caps key on. Column totals. And then space, space, cross foot. Okay. So this is my column totals. Now I have a double underscore under that. You see in accounting we do a lot of single underscores and a lot of double underscores. The double underscore means that's the bottom line. That number is not being added to anything below it. The single underscore means that the number below the single underscore is a summary of the numbers above. Okay, so we want a double underscore here. So I come up to borders. Bottom double border. Click. There we go. So we got that. Now we have this cross foot thing. You see, these all add down. But we want to verify that the formulas here actually include all of these numbers. So what we'll do, so I'll go here, I'll go equals to create a formula. And I'll go click on this total here. And I hit the plus sign. And then that guy, boom. And you see, the total of these two columns should equal the total of all of these, which are the total of the individual rows. So that cross puts now here equals a then the minus sign. See the minus sign there? I just hit that next one and then enter. So that's a minus b. So that ties. Okay. So there we go. We followed instructions using the formatting tools equations in on data rows 14 through 21 to fix duplic and duplicate the solution shown in 26 through 37. So here is, here's our rows here, 14 through 20 and 14 through 21. That was our data. We've manipulated that and we now have duplicated the appearance of what we had down here. Okay. Use the border tool to add the border grid and other formats in the example. Configure for print formatting and landscape mode. So now to check your print formatting, you just hold on the control key and hit P, control P. That shows how you're formatted. Okay, so right now I'm just getting this upper box. I don't have any of the work I've done here. So I hit the escape key and I come back and I'm going to go to from home to page layout and I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to highlight the area I want to print. It says, configure to print one page landscape columns A through H and rows 1 through 38. So here's column A, row 1, through H, down to 38. There's row 38, okay? I come up to page layout. I go to set print area. Set print area. And then I come over here to this little guy, boom. And I go to fit to one page because I want it all to fit in one page. It said landscape mode, so I click on landscape. Okay. And not going to change margins. I want to have the name down here at the bottom of the page. Okay. If I went to sheet, I could click on grid lines and it would put grid lines everywhere, but we've already got our grid lines in there. So click on preview now. And there's what your assignment is, is to have this report looking like this, okay? Then you're going to save, okay? So I'm going to hit my escape key because I don't want to print here. I'm just going to go file, save as, and the instruction said to save as last name. So for me, it's Armor Tom Excel. Excel practice, okay? 
and I've saved, be sure to remember where you save that, okay? So there you go, that's the assignment. How to do all of these things, and you'll know how to do anything in Excel in this particular class. Watching the video on print formatting brings in other things that you need to know for your accounting projects, so be sure to do that. Thank you very much.